Join Jesus where he's already at work. We dream of the day where every home in America is adopted by one or more persons living the prayer, care, share lifestyle. Our host, Gary Kendall, began Love KC with a desire to see every home in Kansas City prayed for. Join with him to make this happen. Now on to the Bless Podcast. Well, welcome to the Bless Podcast, where we join Jesus, where he's already at work, where we live, learn, work, and play. And I'm Gary Kendall, your host, and Brooke Powell is uh, my co-host. And today we are going to actually do this podcast together, the two of us talking about the highlights of 1920, of 19, 2021. Uh, boy, that shows my age, doesn't it, Brooke? <laughs> done the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to comment on that one, right? <laughs> So we we are uh, we are looking forward to talking today about some of our favorite podcasts throughout the year, and we're hopeful that as we highlight some of them, maybe you'll hear a story that makes you want to go. I want to I want to listen to the rest of that podcast and uh, see what what um, what they talked about. Each of these podcasts, Brooke also wrote a blog, and so we, those blogs can be found over on our website at lovekc.net. And if you go to where it says podcast, you can see the list of podcasts and and where it says resources, you can see the list of blogs. So all of those are titled there. Love to have you go deeper on any one of these subjects. And uh, with that, let me ask you a quick question as we begin. Brooke, how were your holidays? Holidays were great. They always go kind of fast, but they were good and just a nice time to rest and relax and get refreshed. So good. And yours? I know a little bit about yours, but um <laughs> yeah, we got we got COVID for Christmas. So I was telling people we must have been on the naughty list, but my <laughs> wife and I had the gift of about 12 days of uh sitting in our living room together most of the time. Oh, she, I was in a chair, she was on the couch, and um so a lot of bonding as we coughed and uh struggled <laughs> to find the strength to walk across the room. But oh. we're doing better. And if I start having a coughing fit today. I will just uh, mute myself, but we're we're getting better and glad to be alive and thankful that even though it did hit us hard, we didn't have hospitalizations or anything like that. Yeah, and a lot of our friends have had that. Yeah. Yeah. Joseph and I got the gift of COVID Christmas in July. So <laughs> <laughs> we were. We were doing I've heard of Christmas in, in July. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we, we were like you guys, but uh, in July. So yeah. kind of makes it a little bit better when someone's doing it with you, but. Yes, it does. It uh, it gave us good time to reflect, and we we did. I did a lot of thinking about twenty one, mm-hmm. and uh, a lot of praying and and planning and dreaming about twenty two. So, let's uh, dive into some of our highlights for the yearbook. I'm going to start off with talking about Soul Care, and the conference we have with with Mindy Caliguire and her team. Mindy brought a team of two others from her Soul Care team. Her Her soul care team is around 10, 12 people, and she brought two others with her to Kansas City. And we were able to serve about 60-something people at the Macedonian Baptist Church for a whole day. And I felt particularly passionate about soul care because I feel like that the many of the people who are on, who are our listeners, are serving. So we're on the serving edge. And there's always something being asked of us. And during COVID, it's been challenging. You know, it's, we've been in these no win situations where the public is so polarized and uh, there's arguments about everything these days. And the people who are trying to serve the masses, so to speak, really feel pulled and torn. They certainly have friends who are on both sides of, of all of the issues and uh, it's been a long season, just when maybe we thought it was getting better at the end of the summer. You know, the fall was was tough again. And um, Omicron seems to be fully alive and well. So the, so, the need for soul care is, is, uh, is high. And I was really glad that we could lean into that and, and serve people the way that we did. Absolutely. Yeah. Um... I really appreciated hearing from Mindy because, and we're going to talk about another person. You know, some of the things we're going to talk about 
we chose them to do the highlights because there's so much we could talk about, mm-hmm. but we interviewed, we interviewed so many people, but the ones that we're going to highlight, you know, it's just very timely uh, for the, the podcast and the blogs that we did. And so, yeah, hope and pray that the things that we have put out and the people we've interviewed have really hit home for people and really ministered to them where they're at right now. So, yeah, many. I would say one of the takeaways from the soul care, what I learned as we leaned into it was that um, the difference between soul care and counseling. So counseling <clears throat> will look into a lot of the reasons uh, that we're, we have the mental health challenges that we have and try to ascertain maybe the root of something or try to understand if this is an external motivated thing that we need to address with an external solution or is it internal? You know, where, where did it come from, et cetera? <clears throat> But spiritual direction is different than that. Just just a second here. Sure. In spiritual direction, what you're doing is with the help of someone else, you're going to the scriptures and you're creating um, choices to make repeatedly that will help you with um, spiritual direction and disciplines and progress. So, it could be having a, a regular quiet time, but maybe it's also having times of silence. It could be maybe you have regular spiritual conversations about the scripture or about things you don't understand or things that trouble you. It could be taking a, um, a silent retreat. And there, there are many different ways that soul care helps us to think about the fact that we are body, mind, and spirit. And we need to think specifically about how do we care for our spirit, because God, it's a gift from God. God's given every one of us a spirit or a soul. Mm-hmm. And, but we sort of naturally learn how to take care of our bodies and our minds. Um, we have a counselor, if, maybe if we need help with that part. But the soul, we need to pay attention to our soul because it's really the heart of everything else. Right. Yeah. And- so, <clears throat> go ahead. Well, I was just thinking about the verse, you know, to guard your heart for it's the wellspring of life. Right, and right. and I think so often just with our culture and especially if you're in full-time ministry, um, which really in business ministry too, but we can just get so busy and, and forget that God almost always is, is going after our hearts and we can right. and maybe not know why we're doing the things we're doing or what really is the root of an issue or even how to get to the root of the issues. You know, I know in in my life, there's many times over the years I've been like, you know, why God is, am I reacting this way? Why do I feel this way? And so the ministry of soul care just really gets down, helps you to get down to the root of the matter, because at the end of the day, God wants freedom for us. And when our hearts are all gunked up with sin or wounds and hurts and just life stuff that happens to us, you know, we're not able to function in the freedom that he has. And so the soul care ministry is just so phenomenal um, for all kinds of issues, things where people are, things that they're dealing with. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. When she she was explaining what it was to me, I was just so thankful for a ministry like that because there's so many pastors who (laughs) they need ministered to, you know? So they did a, um, a little inside of the workshop, they did an exercise where um, one person just read scripture to the other person. And they read it really slowly. They repeated it some, and then they asked really simple questions. You know, like, how is this scripture speaking to you right now? Not how have you understood it in the past, or what does it mean? But Mm -hmm. how does this scripture speak right now? And then the person would answer questions about the the scripture itself. And they repeated that in multiple ways over about 15 minute period of time. But clearly in the way they did the exercise, the scripture was the center of the story. And then the the people were the responders to let the scripture speak and let the the Holy Spirit speak through the scriptures. I thought it was so powerful and so profound. You know, in 15 minutes, it was like almost like the world kind of stopped while you know, two souls were listening to the scripture and to the spirit 
And I thought, how calming is that? You know, what good direction that gives Mm -hmm. and who couldn't make time for that? But if we're not aware or we're not seeking something out like that, then we, we can easily miss it. So that's just one example of the way that I think soul care can can help us as we go forward. And anybody could Google soul care and, and the name Mindy Caliguire and find their website and lots of resources. They also have um, spiritual direction coaches that you can um, engage. And so you can make it as, as um, interactive where you're just uh, kind of passively reading from the outside, or if you wanted to dive right in and be a part of it, you could, it's all online. So we're excited about soul care and what God has for Mindy and her team in uh, 2022. Yeah. And if you missed the podcast, you can go back and catch the podcast. It's on our group. And I believe we shared it on our um, Love KC page as well. So very good. Well, I will transition and talk about um, Mike Willich. We interviewed him, did a podcast with him. Um, he is with Unconventional Business Network. And his story is just so cool. He was a former pastor for 29 years and got a call from the founder and CEO of Unconventional Business Network, Rick Box, uh, called him up and asked if he would be interested in moving to Kansas City and working with him in this uh, ministry. And so what, what Unconventional Business Network does is work with uh, business leaders, owners um, in the community to help them be on mission uh, in the work in the marketplace. And so one thing I just love so much about uh, Mike Willich and his story is, you know, just the connection between ministry isn't just in a church or in a certain building, but, you know, business owners and leaders in the community are on mission and God has a ministry for them um, where they're at. And so uh, I'll just call it UBN, Unconventional Business Network, UBN. Um, trains, coaches, mentors, um, business owners and leaders all over the U.S. really. They do conferences in several states and they're going to continue to add to that. But they just have a great ministry to uh, business leaders. When Mike was a pastor, he he noticed a trend over the almost 30 years he was there. And it was that the business, um, the business owners and leaders they would maybe come to church, but then they wouldn't really get involved in any of the ex- extracurricular like activities or things that the church was doing. And so he wanted to bridge that gap. And so Mike has transitioned and made the, the shift um, out of ministry as a pastor um, into ministering to business owners and leaders. So it's just beautiful um, how God has been meeting the marketplace. And I wrote in my blog that Billy Graham actually said that the next revival would take place in the Mm -hmm. marketplace. So. Yeah, I was inspired by Mike too. I I had the chance to go out to eat with Mike um, one time by myself. And then one time built into my wife and I went out with Mike and Cindy. And it was inspiring to hear him talk about how he really learned the truth that you just expressed kind of on his own. But then he began to realize that this is true for a lot of people in the business community, that they have leadership roles where they <clears throat> work, but they often aren't invited into leadership roles. Mm-hmm. They're invited into serving roles at their church, but they have more to give. And um, so helping them to kind of unlock the fact that they can use their leadership gifts at work, or even as some of the, in some cases, they were. Um, creating serving opportunities from the workplace where they could serve in not-for-profits or other kinds of things. So we're always saying, Brooke, you know, follow, follow Jesus, you know, where he, where you live, learn, work, and play, you know, uh, join Jesus where he's already at work, where you live, learn, work, and play. So that work part, <clears throat> it was fun to actually kind of highlight that because we're often highlighting neighborhoods, right. but it was, it was fun to highlight the work part. Yeah. And speaking of neighborhoods, I just wanted to mention a story about Mike before we move on from him. But, you know, he he shared a story that him and his wife had been praying how they could minister to their neighbors in their neighborhood. And uh, God gave them the idea to build like a patio area outside the front of his house with a chimney. So they did that and 
started roasting marshmallows on a weekly basis. And that was how they began meeting their neighbors because the kids, the neighborhood kids would come over and they would all be having marshmallows. And then when they would run out of marshmallows, they would send them home to their house to say, Hey, do you got, can we bring marshmallows? And then the parents would come with them. And so that was how, that was the method or what that. God used uh, to, for him to reach his neighbors. And so there's so many creative ideas on how we can reach our neighbors and, and start to develop a relationship with them. So I just yeah. love that. And he was excited to hear about Bless Every Home. When we first started talking about Bless Every Home, he hadn't heard of it. And so when we were able to tell him, but he already had the idea of loving your neighbor and being a good neighbor, awesome. which is a biblical idea. Yeah. He just didn't have the tool. So he was excited to begin using it. I had a lot of questions in the beginning, but took to it like a like a duck on the water. So that, that was fun. Yeah, that's awesome. It was awesome. <clears throat> well, I'm going to take us in the direction of uh, thinking citywide next, Brooke. Um, I really enjoyed the podcast we did with Eric Swanson. And Eric Swanson's uh, been a, a hero, you know, in my life for years. It's funny, I just got a text from him as I was starting to talk, <laughs> to talk about Eric. That's hilarious. <laughs> it is. But um, years ago, when I read his book, To Transform a City, it was the first time I began to think about how that we might have impact in a city and how that God loves cities, you know, like God loves churches or God loves individuals. He thinks about a city as a unit. And I really hadn't considered the kingdom value at that point in time Mm. of churches working together and not for profits and trying to have what I've come to call the orchestration of a city movement where you actually could move the needle on things that are important to God. And Eric was the first one to bring that to my attention. And he motivated me to take uh, the goal of 10% of my time every week to dedicate it to citywide ministries, which over a period of 20 years or so added up to me later realizing that this next chapter of my life would be one where God was moving me out of local church ministry into citywide ministry. So it was fun to have Eric as uh, as a guest, and Eric can talk spontaneously about very detailed subjects at a high level that I can barely understand for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's like a fountain of wisdom, and yeah. it was fun that day as we as he just went over all of these different things that he's learning. Presently, Eric's leading a um, a convening network called LAR Lost Antlers Ranch. And there's probably about 50 different city leaders that are a part of this of this cohort. And he convenes them about every other week. And they learn from each other. And they take uh, turns sharing what they're learning. Different city leaders have different strengths, different cities have different ministries, but we can all learn from each other. And it was fun to hear him give highlights and to um, really call out, I think, the fact that this is God's plan for the kingdom. If we want to just grow the in, our individual churches, we're going to have a real limited ability to impact a whole city. Mm-hmm. It's only when cities begin to work together that um, their collective might can move the needle in a, in a positive direction. So it's really fun just to hear him riff. That's what he likes to to call it. He just riff on uh, the things that are going through his mind and what he's learning. Yeah. Yeah. I like the foundation that God gave him when he was with Campus Crusade for Christ for several years. So it's just in Campus Crusade for Christ, for those who don't know, is very evangelistic. I mean, that's, I think their number one goal is to make disciples, you know, is to share the gospel. And, and so for him to have that going into where he is now, Mm -hmm. like, like you said, he's learned that, Mm -hmm. If we really want like the greatest impact that we can make, if we really want to get the gospel out and make disciples, it is going to take the collaboration of the city. And so I was so encouraged um, being on the podcast. I had never heard like read his book or heard of him before. And so it's just super encouraging to hear the testimonies he shared and the vision he has of what it what it is going to take for for a whole city to be to be saved and discipled. In his latest book, 14 Fridays, he 
he tells a story in kind of a novel form about a pastor who's trying to understand what he could do in Denver to, uh, to really make a difference. And there's a tension that develops between his board that wants him to focus more on things in, inside the walls of a church and on this conviction he has in his soul about focusing on outside the church. And so it's a great story. I, I found there to be a lot of truth in, in this struggle. And um, it, it, the story gets told in a way that just draws you right in. So it was fun to hear him tell how God gave him the idea. Actually, what happened is he he tried to write, you know, chapters about the convictions he had, and he just couldn't, it didn't seem like it was going to um, be a bestseller. And so he began to think about how could I take these same things and put them in a way where people would really want to read the next chapter mm-hmm. and want to learn about how do you use data in the church or how do you survey your neighborhood, et cetera. And um, what resulted was a story form. And uh, it's just really good. You'll have to go back and listen to that one. If you didn't hear that particular podcast, or if you didn't um, read Brooks' blog, I would encourage you to go back and read about Eric Swanson and um, his uh, story about to transform a city. Yeah, his books are definitely on my to read list. So Mm -hmm. definitely going to get those. Was well, there anything else you wanted to share about him before we move on? About Eric? I'm just thankful that, you know, we're still in relationship. I'm one of those city leaders that meets regularly. And um, a couple of days ago, I asked him for an introduction to a different city leader in another city. <clears throat> I'd heard this city leader talk and um, just love some of the things that they were doing with discipleship and training mm-hmm. leaders, et cetera. But I'd never met this person. So I wrote Eric two days ago and just said, "Hey, can you do? Can you make an introduction uh, for me on email so that you can kind of break the ice and I could have this person's email address so we could start a conversation?" So he did that two days ago, and I wrote him today wow. to say it went spectacular. So awesome. I was saying thank you, and he said thank you to me right as we started talking about him. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what a blessing to have a mentor and a support and a coach like it that. Is. It is. Well, we will move on to uh, Regina Ford. We um, talked about immigration or immigrants. And so, again, just so timely for right now. And like I had uh, mentioned to you at a prior time, Gary, you know, immigration, we have, you know, immigrants coming in all the time in the country. So this isn't anything new, um, but there has been more of an influx, as we know right now. And and there's um, many different opinions and feelings and controversy around that subject. And so, It was very refreshing to hear from Regina because she has really gotten the heart of God towards immigrants, whether they're legal or illegal. And it was just so encouraging. So I I highly recommend if you're hearing this podcast right now and you missed that one, definitely go back and catch hers because it was so encouraging and you'll definitely glean from her knowledge and insight and her heart for immigrants. But she's been working with, um, you know, foreigners, um, whether it's foreign exchange students, um, you know, legal immigrants coming in illegal. She's been working with anyone and everyone who's come in from other countries. And she's actually, um, now doing research, a lot of research. She's been doing research for a while. Um, she's working on a doctorate. Yeah. If do you, can you speak, I'm forgetting like some of those, do you remember some of those details about what she's doing right now? Well, she has an invitation. I mean, she's working with um, a group that's out of uh, England and when she finishes and she has like her, the, the next main step for her is to write her paper, but she'll soon have her doctorate in uh, serving refugees and being able to uh, teach and write about immigration. Okay. So yeah, and she's done, oh my God, so much research. She's learned so much being in school and uh, she really wants to help bridge the gap between the church, the big C church and uh, refugees, foreigners and things like that, because there's so many myths, myths out there, misinformation, wrong ideas about, (laughs) yeah, about how we should feel towards them and, and what our role is. Um, as the body of Christ. And so 
Um, you know, even just recently right now, we've had uh, some Afghan refugees come into Kansas City and, you know, she's been a great resource for people wanting to right. help minister to them and meet their needs. And so um, if you ha- if you're listening to this and you have a heart to want to help, whether it's them or anyone I mean, Regina would definitely be someone you want to connect with, and um, we can get you there, her information to connect. Yeah, I with. think there's a, a website, Refugee KC, and Regina's last name is spelled F O A R D. So if you're Googling Regina, you'd want to know that. But yeah, we had a conversation on email the last couple of days where someone was trying to offer help to Afghani refugees. And her perspective on that was really interesting and helpful. And one of the things that she reminded me in, um, she was glad to offer the help and the contacts and all of that. But one of the things that she wanted me to remember is that there's refugee groups that have been settling in Kansas City for like four years now, whether it's Sudanese or from the Congo or from Yemen or other places around the globe. And that Some of these populations are um, further down the road, but they still have needs. And she was kind of like saying, don't forget about the fact that, um, you know, the the Afghani refugees will have a lot of attention on them right now and probably receive quite a bit of help for the short term and maybe even be overwhelmed with not knowing what to do with all of that. But the other, these other refugee communities that have been here for some time, really do need help. And um, we don't want to forget them. And the other thing she added, I thought was really interesting, Brooke. She said that sometimes when it's just uh, meeting felt needs, you're doing everything you can to help the person, but there's not a lot of opportunity for discipleship. And she said these other groups that have been here a while, um, now they're starting to be able to offer beyond just the felt needs, the spiritual needs. And so they're doing some discovery Bible studies and maybe a, a, a maybe a large colony of refugees lives in a certain apartment house or something like that. So they're doing discovery Bible studies there <clears throat> or they're doing some discipleship or uh, the most exciting part about it is they're training these families to be able to be the ones who pastor the new people coming in. Mm-hmm. And um, of course they, have a natural ability to do that in some ways because they have this common need they share, but they might not have the spiritual training. And so they're coming along beside them to give them spiritual training to be able to, to reach the, the people who are, are moving in. And of course they're much better at it than we are, but it was just really helpful for her to peel back the, um, the situation just a little bit and say, you know, we should be helping the Afghani refugees, but we should not forget those from the Congo or Sudan or um, South Sudan or Yemen, other places like that. Yeah, that's so good. I just wanted to highlight something you just said, or, you know, a a principle that in order to gain um, the right to speak into someone's life spiritually and disciple them, um, meeting practical needs first is really the way to do it because Mm -hmm. whether it's youth ministry, adults, strangers, neighbors, they really aren't going to listen as much as what you have to say if they don't know that you care first. Right. And think you're just there for an agenda. And so um, that's why she was saying now they're doing the discovery Bible studies after four years. It took, right. took right. us several years mm-hmm. to develop trust with these right. refugees to be able to get to that place. And so and some of them had to learn language too. Well, now, so that was another thing I wanted to highlight that she said that was um, cause I asked her, you know, what was, what's a way that, um, if someone wants to like, what can I do? If someone's like, what can I do? These people don't know English, you know, mm-hmm. and they're, ha- I mean, imagine putting yourself into a different country where you don't know the language and you're trying to function and live, like how to even go, like go to the doctor or hospital, just mm-hmm. things that are really important. And so if a person's listening to this and they do have, um, training in ESL, then you would definitely, um, be able to help because there's classes, uh, that community right. centers, in different places offer. Um, or if you're, if that sounds interesting to you, you can go get training. I think, I think I wrote it down. I think it's a one to two year program to be able to do that. Um, and I did just want to mention, she, she said that there's 70 ethnic groups 
in Kansas City. That's how many different ethnicities are represented with these refugees. We don't have to go to the world with the gospel. The world's come to Kansas City. Yes, the Lord brought the nations to us. So you can be on mission in your backyard and not even realize that the nations are there. So she talked about how that sometimes it's the simplest thing, like people needing a ride to the grocery store or to the doctor or to get a haircut where we take these things for granted, but they don't always have um, dependable transportation, or if they do, maybe their spouse has that vehicle at work and someone else is stranded at home, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, Brooke. Yeah, Or going to the ER. She was saying they'll go to the the emergency room, not knowing that you can just make a doctor's visit and not have to pay all this money in the emergency room. And so, um, yeah, so that was, that was very insightful as well. So very good. Yeah. Well, we got time for a couple more. Um, Amy Mitchell and her daughter, Mariah, lead a ministry called Anchor Her. And we're actually doing a podcast on her coming up. So this one is more like um, we interviewed Amy and Mariah when we did a prayer call uh, some time ago. And then we um, are doing a podcast coming up with, with Anchor Her. But essentially what Amy and Mariah well, I'll, I'll take one step back. Amy was pregnant with Mariah and lost her for a time in the system because uh, she wasn't able to provide good care as a mom, but was able to get her back Wow! and did some, some time in a recovery home. And as, as Amy fought for her own recovery and fought for the ability to have her child in her care, she had people come around her. Uh, who are Christians and really give her the support she needed to make this change in her lifestyle. And over time now, Amy has moved to the other side where she's the one offering support. And Mariah, her daughter is uh, serving right alongside of her. And it's, it's very exciting. You know, I, I, you never play favorites, but I, I really was um, real motivated listening to Amy and Mariah talk about how that they've, use this really challenging time of life. Um, they could have been so destructive and turn it into something beautiful. Mm-hmm. And um, they talked a lot about the different specifics of how they do what they do. But the general theme is to help women get on their feet so they can come through incarceration or out of drug addiction and then get on their feet, get into a, a group that will sustain and help them and provide support, and then eventually get them to uh, have a relationship with God and become a disciple who makes disciples. And they're seeing, they're seeing this turn now. They've been at it you know, long enough now that they're seeing people that they've served turn into the people who are serving. And they've got some big dreams about the future, so I'm not going to give all of that away. Uh-huh. But I, I think you should listen to the podcast when it comes out here in a week or two. And watch for it. It's uh, Amy Mitchell, her daughter, Mariah, and the ministry is Anchor Her. So that's a little bit of a tease about the future. Yeah. So that's just in, that's tomorrow, isn't it? I think that's, yep. It's coming up tomorrow at four, four (laughs) o'clock central time. So yes. um, I love when God turns the things that we think are just going to destroy us and, Mm -hmm. you know, he just turns it around and uses it for things that just blow our mind. Right. It's such a beautiful story. I didn't know that about Amy and Mariah. Maybe they'll share mm-hmm. that tomorrow, but I, I, I'm sure they will. Yeah. So thanks for sharing that. So anything else about Amy and Mariah before we move on? Just need to listen. Yes. <laughs> Good. We got one more. We're going to highlight here. Uh, we did a, we did a podcast with Porsche seals with caring for kids. And so that was a really awesome one too. And Again, always a need um, to serve children and serve the schools, um, especially even now, just as hard as it's been with COVID and the kids not being in school, and um, which I think they're back now. So lots of opportunities, but it's pretty cool. There are 385 community partners with Caring for Kids. And so I just wanted to break that down because I just think it's cool. But it's 109, 162 churches, 109 businesses and 114 civic and nonprofit organizations. A lot to keep up with. Yeah. So for her to yeah keep up with all that is incredible. Um, 
So they serve preschools, elementary schools, middle schools, high schools, and alternative programming in seven school districts in the metro area. And that represents 90 schools altogether, which is so awesome. And um, I guess I'll touch base a little bit on this if this is okay, but to talk about you know, if you want to get involved and even maybe you go back and listen to the podcast and you're like, wow, this is really what I want to give myself to is serving the schools. And um, so listen to that to get more information. But we want to split up Kansas City in five districts so we can make it easier for people to serve instead of maybe there's a need all the way up north and you live in the south. Um, but to find the needs closer to where you are. And so we're going to be um, separating out us and some other ministries, separating it out in five districts so that people can be more strategic in serving their community. And in this particular case with schools, because obviously there's schools in each school district and, and where you live. And so um, it's just really awesome what they're doing. They're creating a pathway for churches and organizations, for community, for business owners, to be the hands and feet of Jesus in schools. So it's just, again, bridging that gap. And I just, it's so beautiful just to see how God wants to use us in all spheres of society. And there's not one, there's not one aspect that he's forgotten or doesn't care about. And so caring for kids has been such an amazing blessing, um, even for feeding, feeding kids. I mean, helping deliver meals, um, pay for food. For them in schools and even out just families in need. I mean, it helps. This is caring for kids ministers to teachers, to kids and families. It's not just even the students. It's, it's really helping the community all around. So I'm very impressed with what, with the ministry and the work at caring for kids. Yeah, I am too. And I think it's, it's a world-class, you know, organization. And what I mean by that is there's only a few in the whole United States that do what they do on the level that caring for kids does it in Kansas city, which is exciting to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and yet they really desire to grow. And you talked about the five region idea in Kansas city. And one of the conversations I had with Portia was how can love KC come alongside caring for kids so that let's say that if we have contacts in region two, which is KC Mo. Um, how can we use leverage some of those contacts to maybe get caring for kids to the table, you know, with business partners or with the church? Um, I think to some, de- to some degree, they're better off pursuing the school than anyone else because they have the relationship with the principals and the superintendents and the teachers. Right. But <clears throat> we can provide the surrounding pieces, you know, if the school would say yes. Like I asked her what's going on north of the river. And she was saying, well, we don't have very many open doors there. And um, I was saying, you know, but we have lots of lights there. So maybe there's a way we can communicate with their lights to open some doors so that when you go to the superintendent, you can already say, we know that there's this many people who've adopted their neighborhood to pray, care, and share. And we believe that they're ready to stand with the school and help the school in a partnership. So those kind of opportunities are are exciting. Yeah, that's so good. I just, I love, love KC and how we connect people to be able to use their gifts and skills um, to meet the needs in the community. And I feel like there's so many people who want to help or want to serve, but they don't they don't maybe know where or how. And so, you know, Love KC is here to help connect people with the needs to use your gifts and, and skills um, to minister to these people all just really close to you, you know. Schools so if you're and- listening on iTunes um, you may, and you're not, you're not going to the Facebook page, you may want to go to the Love KC Facebook page. And when you go there, you'll be able to find Brooke regularly has social media posts that can give you opportunities or ideas of ways to get involved. Then we have a Facebook group called uh, Love KC Living on Mission, and you can interact with other people who are living on mission there. So if you're in iTunes or um, maybe you're listening through Google Google Play, but you're in the Kansas City area, 
I would encourage you to go over to Facebook and, and uh, look Love KC up. You can also go to the website, lovekc.net, mm-hmm. and you can find links there to the, the things we've been talking about. And you can also find on YouTube, on our Love KC channel on YouTube, you can find recordings of all of the podcasts. So maybe today you're, here, you're hearing one that you say, I want to go back and listen to that. You can find it on the website, but you can also find it on YouTube. And in some ways, it might be easier to even search it on YouTube. Um, YouTube has the best search engine of any of the uh, platforms. So you might find things faster on YouTube. But Brooke, this has been fun. I have enjoyed uh, remembering these podcasts. I'm looking forward to that. I know we have a busy schedule this month Mm -hmm. with uh, probably three or four coming up real soon. But it's fun to... um, to, to remember these. And thanks, Brooke, for all the work you put into these. You're the one who secures our guests. You're the one who prepares them. Uh, you work on the questions. You write a blog afterwards and follow up on that. So you do a tremendous job. It's fun to work with you. And I'm, I'm really grateful for the gifts that you bring to Love KC. Thank you so much, Gary. It's really been an honor and a pleasure and just fun as well to hear all the different ways God's moving across Kansas city and through the different people and ministries. So I'm honored to be able to be in this role. So thank you for the opportunity. And, and just wanted to say too, for those listening, um, like he said, the blogs are, uh, you can go to lovekc.net if you want to read on those or the podcast, if you wanted to catch those. Um, and like he said, they're also on the group as well. So and if you haven't signed up for those, like maybe you're hearing about the blogs and going, how did I miss that? Well, if you go to the website, there's a drop down menu that, that pops up as soon as you go to the website that gives you a chance to sign up. I think it says join the cause or something like that. And when you do that, then you'll receive all the blogs that Brooke is writing. Great. All right. Well, thanks for joining today. We'd love to connect with you the next time, which won't be long. So God bless you and have a great day. Thank you for listening from the folks at Love KC. We hope you enjoyed our program. See you next time.